everyone, and welcome to the Human Design Podcast with me, your host, Emma Dunwoody. I'm a qualified master coach and human behavior specialist, as well as being a qualified human design coach. And I work with clients every single day to answer the big questions. Who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I also assist them to transition from the person they think they should be to the person they really are on the inside. I teach people how to actually live their design instead of just knowing it. And if this is something that you want to do too, well stay tuned or reach out for private coaching or human design unpacks where I show you exactly how to live your design. Hey, hey everyone. I am so excited to share with you something that we've been working on behind the scenes for a little while now. We've created the Millions of Millionaires Project to support small businesses like mine to thrive as we move toward the new paradigm. This is going to be a time where there will be millions of us with businesses we love, supporting us to live the most abundant life, and from this place, serving the planet with our gifts, our superpowers, and the fulfillment of our purpose. With this sponsorship program, it is our intention to build millions of millionaires through experiencing, engaging with, and supporting like-minded entrepreneurs and business owners who share our values and vision by holding space for them to showcase their businesses, products, and services with you to ultimately assist you in your journey to becoming the most aligned version of you. I have worked really hard to build this amazing audience who are incredibly engaged, they're driven to heal, to learn and to grow. And of course, you're all diehard human design fans. And I want to make sure that you're across all the brilliant services, tech, products and individuals that are bringing this planet into the new paradigm. I would love to see millions of millionaires creating their abundant lives and paying it forward in my lifetime and, of course, for millennia to come. So if you have a product, service, or even event you'd like to share with this amazing audience, then please email Taylor, my rockstar operations manager, at support at Emma Dunwoody for all the details and data. Okay, without any further ado, let's jump into our first ever sponsor on the Millions of Millionaires project. So I'm going to introduce you to Sarah Wilder and her incredible human design inspired aura type jewelry collection. I actually received mine a few weeks ago and I absolutely love it. I've had it on that the boys trying on the the talisman ring that I've got um, and it looks great on them as well. I think even my eldest is quite keen to get one. Now, this collection of Sarah's was created to inspire those who feel a deep resonance with human design but feel overwhelmed with all the information. And, you know, sometimes they don't really know where to start with their deconditioning and embodiment journey. These talismans act as a daily anchor or a portal to the various potential within us. Each one is designed with intention, infused with a story, and assigned themes to help focus your mind and help you to remember who you truly are and what it is you are wanting to manifest or cultivate more in your life. We all know that where focus goes, energy flows. If we if we are serious about embodying our truth and aligning with who we really are, who we really are, then practical and symbolic tools like these talisman to wear on your body daily can be a great way to bypass the monkey mind and connect to your subconscious to create real tangible change over time. The front of the design is a richly symbolic image that contains the energies of each aura type. This alone is a great tool for daily contemplation, connection, and self-divination. The back has the keywords that remind you of your strategy and your aura type, which many of us forget, especially in the beginning of our experiment. This is more than just jewelry. It is a self-divination and direction tool, a practical anchor for your daily rituals that help guide you back home to yourself. Each talisman comes with a meaning card you can place on your sacred space and connect with your daily devotional practices. They come in a ring or a pendulum form with three ring sizes, all adjustable to cover most finger sizes. They are all sterling silver, so it will last you a lifetime. 
If this sounds something that you want to get in on, then use the code HDPODCAST at the checkout for 15% off this collection. Obviously, we are going to put the link in the show notes. And I really just want to share with you, I am loving my ring. It really does give me this Oh, what is it? Like it brings me back to the now. It brings me back to who I really am. It's really funny. You know, often when I put it on in the morning, it's sitting there next to my moisturizer and I can literally see on the inside, MG, wait to respond and inform. And it reminds me to slow down, to take a breath and remember that I'm in response. I don't need to have to force it. So if you want to check out the ring for you, and by the way, I have a medium to large sized ring. Um, As I said, it fitted both of my boys and also fitted just on his pinky finger. Um, Then all you got to do is go follow the link in the show notes, um, use the code HD podcast, and you're going to receive a 15% off this aura type jewelry collection from Sarah Wilder. So go check it out. Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast. Well, today marks the start of a new series. Um, In my HDX program membership, kind of a bit of both, um, we've been doing the center panels. So I wanted to share some of the insights that we're learning or the distinctions that are just so powerful here on the podcast for you guys. And of course, if you want to learn more, you can just go to the link in the show notes, in my Instagram bio, wherever you find my stuff and go ahead and join if you love this content. So today we're kicking off with the Ajna, uh, sorry, with the head center. And um, today I have Susan with me. Hello, Susan. How are you? Fine. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yay, I'm super excited to have Susan with us. Um, Do you want to give the listeners just an idea of your design um, and a little bit about yourself? And then we're going to dive into some of the questions. Sure. I was part of your Purpose and Abundance um, intensive, and it was really life changing. I am a generator, but I'm an emotional authority and a three five profile. So I get to experiment. And so that's really fun. I love it. Um, Okay. So we're going to dive in. Obviously, for you guys who do know me well, well, I'm the player with the undefined head um, and Susan has a defined head. Now, when we're talking about the head centre, um, and actually, before we jump in, the other thing I just want to outline is the purpose of the, these podcasts is to talk to the general energies of the head centre. Obviously, everyone is going to have their unique expression, depending on what gates they've got, whether they're in their their personality side of their chart or their design side of their chart. However, what we've discovered just doing these center um, panels, and of course, in the the knowledge that we've all been exposed to from from Ra, we know that there are some really significant um, traits that run throughout each center. So today, that's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about these distinctions because what we've discovered especially through the the panels that we do in the in hdx is that so often the knowledge talks to something but it 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 doesn't actually represent um like clearly how that energy is expressed or felt or interacted with and having real life expressions of these energies is really helping us all to deepen our experiment so um that's what we're going to do today so I'm going to kick off with the the first question for you, Susan. Um, given that the the head center is all about inspiration and questioning, um, let's just start with a really simple one. How do you experience inspiration through the mind? I always am coming up with ideas. I'm probably on my fourth or fifth career because I always have a new idea and it's just a constant, it's almost like a river running through my head of thought stream. And I can either pay attention to it or not, but it's always constantly there. And it's kind of nice because I can essentially calm down and land in my body Mm. and still have the thought stream going and trust that my head will 
come up with ideas. Um, I've also like dove into those thought streams and kind of like ridden them out and it can get kind of intense that way, especially with my emotional authority, like riding that wave of like, I don't like that idea. I do like that idea. Yeah. But I literally, as long as I, even when I connect my body, like I can feel that inspiration just coming to me. And when I'm around other people as well, I, that almost gets magnified. I'll have to say, um, mm. I just see like the bigger picture. I've always been a big picture person. And it's like, oh, or like very unusual ways of looking at very standard things. So that's just something that came to me naturally. I thought that was a gift, but I didn't realize that it was related at the time to having a defined head. Yeah. Center. Yeah. I think that's so fascinating because um, one of the distinctions that really stood out for me is, was that consistency that, 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 the the energy of the the head center because I'm completely open in the head like it's so inconsistent for me I don't have this consistent ideas or inspiration inspiration hits do you know what I mean it's like with the undefined head it is that that definition of inspiration hits or you know if I go into the shower all of a sudden things drop in um, but one of the things I love to hear from all of you on the panel with the definition, it was like just the, con- the consistent, almost logical, and we don't necessarily mean not logical thinking. We just mean like um, like a consistent one foot in, the, in front of the other kind of flow of inspiration and, and information coming in. Is that fair to say? Very much so. I, I know you've also talked about the head center as a pressure center, and I will mm-hmm. definitely say when... I I sometimes have to make fake deadlines for myself in order to get things done because it is a constant stream of ideas and you're like, well, which is the right one? And when I have that pressure added into that stream of ideas, then that clarity of the path of the right next step is right there, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I love that because I was just about to ask about that pressure. Um, and I love what I'm hearing is that it feels like this resourceful sense of pressure. It's not this unresourceful sense of pressure, which for myself, um, as soon as that pressure with my open head appears, it becomes really unresourceful. Like I can't think straight. Like I, the moment that pressure appears and, you know, it can be the people around me. I can even be my own conditioning, doing it to myself. Um, but all of a sudden it's like it goes empty and messy in there or messy and empty in there so I don't receive anything at all, which I think is really cool distinction again with the head, like how the pressure centre of this energy coming down from source is actually meant to work in alignment. And that what that is is literally being able to, and I love how you articulated it, Susan, know what the next right step is. So this pressure feels like progress in thinking um, is at least what I'm hearing as opposed to, the pressure in my undefined open head center that just feels like a really uncomfortable stress and, and force energy. Does that resonate with you, Susan? Very much so. And I've actually found myself giving people more grace and not putting people on the spot so much with questions, because I realize if they have an open head, they need time to even formulate those questions and like settle in and figure out what their question is. Yeah. Me, I could list like 20 questions. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Because I just, it's like, oh, you want me to turn that on? I can turn on that spigot. It's on, it's dripping all the time anyway. And so yeah. I can turn it on when I need to. I love that. And when the, the questions are coming in and when it's turned on, does it feel like um, a path, like a logical, again, let's not get caught. This is just logical circuitry. We're just talking about, does it feel like a process? Does it feel like I'm going to ask this, then I then I sort of go to here and then I go to here and then I go to here. Like, are you kind of aware of the process, the questioning process? Um, I will find that oftentimes I'm like three or four steps ahead of people. And so I am slowing down and walking them through. I don't know what my next step is until it lights up, but I am often walking people through that process because it's like, okay, to bring you back to where my mind is because it's 15 steps ahead because it's already moved on from that. Yeah. Um, I realize now that people process information at different rates. And so giving them time and space to breathe and feel in their body and, and process that information is really um, key to, yeah. to finding success, I found. Yeah, I love that. And again, um, being an undefined person, one of the things that I can totally resonate with is as soon as that 
pressure is applied and especially being a line three, you know, like I had trouble literally asking questions at school, um, even when I was um, certifying, you know, I was studying for three years to become a master coach and, you know, in the live trainings, they really valued people who ask questions. So I literally had to teach myself to ask questions. And I would often think like they're really rubbish questions, but at least I'm asking questions, you know. Um, and one of the, the real distinctions that has been so powerful for me is like I'm really good at questions now, but there is absolutely no path to them. Um, the reason why I'm good at asking questions is because they drop in, you know, like there's I'm not applying pressure to myself. Um, I'm not identifying with other people's pressure, but what I know I'm really good at is just not knowing, like sitting in this big wide open place and being like, oh, now I'm going to ask this. And it's not even like, because what I'm hearing and what I hear from, from defined heads is like, there is an air of curiosity, like, oh, I want to go down that rabbit hole. Whereas I don't feel that at all. I kind of just, a question just pops up. It just pops into my mind and I ask it. Um, so it's a very different process. But the other thing I want to talk to, which is important for the undefined head, is um, that like giving us time because the undefined, I'm the same. Like if I feel the pressure to come up with an answer, I have to walk away. I can't, I can't, uh, or even a question or even to know what I'm thinking or what my idea is or how I want to contribute. As long as I'm sitting with someone else, that can feel really you know, pressured. Um, but if I just take time away, and this works really well for me, um, I think that's why I get a lot of my downloads, you know, hiking, showering, like in all these places where I'm kind of busy being in the moment, then it's like then I have um, access to hear what's coming in as opposed to having that computer that's running the zeros and ones constantly in my mind. Does that make sense? Does that resonate? Yes. And I definitely like, if I sit down and know that I have 60 minutes or 90 minutes to get something done, that would normally take others a whole lot longer, just because my head is always, I can get it done in that amount of time. Cause I know I have this amount of time. I feel the pressure and I'm not wasting my time bemoaning different details or decisions because it just unfolds like very focused in that way, because it's like, I have the pressure of the time. And when I don't have pressure of time, I feel like, yeah, so we could, I'll probably go down 12 rabbit holes. As you said, go down the rabbit hole. Sure. I will go down 12 rabbit holes for 12 completely different topics at once Yeah, <laughs> and let my mind, you know, just think on those things. So yes. And as part of my spiritual process, which a lot of times people tell you to get out of the mind. Mine's been more about integrating my mind and my body and like mm. allowing my powerful mind to think and have this connection to source and this constant stream of thoughts. I'm not trying to empty thoughts. I just yeah. allow them to move through. I love this distinction. It's something we've talked a lot about in the panel as well. And it's definitely something that I've noticed working with clients um, and even having a son that has a defined head and Ajna. You know, I think that, because of the time that we live in, there's all this change. Everyone's trying to do the best they can with what they've got. Um, we're cutting corners and creating new ways and we're going at this really fast rate. And I think one of the things that happens when we're going at such speed is that we miss the nuances. We miss the things that are true for the individuals, which is why we're here. It's why we're doing the experiment. And I think that what you've just touched on is one of the really important pieces that when you have a defined head um, and, and or Ajna or defined Ajna, um, you are a person who's designed to have that computer processing the zeros and ones always. You're not necessarily designed to have a quiet mind. Um, you know, I know for me teaching my son, you know, for, it was very much about being present and watching his mind. And then also knowing, you know, one of the questions we had on the panel is like, how do you get to sleep with that sort of different definition? And, you know, I was, ex I was exp um, sharing with, I love Susan, just, just laughed. Um, I love sharing with my son, you know, the process and he's an MG, so he has to get the balance, right? So the physical body needs to be tired. The mind needs to be tired. He also has to have an hour, an hour and a half to wind down his mind and body um, through all sorts of different processes, whether it's meditation, whether it's just watching a movie, you know, like often he'll just watch Star Wars, which I love, but still it's not very relaxing, but it works for him. So I think that's one of the other things to understand is that 
with the defined head, don't ever think that you're broken because it won't go quiet. One of the cool things we did learn on the um, the panel was how um, you can use, because I often recommend a mantra for a defined head um, and when they're meditating, so the puppy, the mind has something to do. But one of the cool distinctions that did come out is that over time, the mantra really helps to build the muscle. But then over time, you don't necessarily need the mantra because the muscle is already built. So I thought that was really powerful as well. Um, I did have something else to ask or to add, but it's gone. So I'm going to go to one of the things that I thought was really cool um, because I totally couldn't resonate with it was in the in the panel, you spoke about how as a kid, you were just constantly asking questions, like constantly asking questions. And there was also a shadow side to that that um, that wasn't necessarily received too well. Do you want to talk to that a little bit? Yes. I'm not sure I remember what the shadow side is, but I'm sure you can remind me. But yes, as a little kid, I would constantly ask the questions. I was the youngest of four kids. I There was a big age gap. Um, and I, it was like a way to engage. And also I think there was probably maybe the shadow side was trying to prove myself yeah. around that and, and be a part and be understood. Um, and I never really felt understood, but I knew I was just one trying to engage, but, um, I would ask questions and argue because it was fun to me Yeah, <laughs> and it was not fun to my parents who did not have defined heads. Actually, I think my dad may have a defined head, but they did not really see the joy in the arguing, but I saw it as just fun and we were engaging and we're here. And that was not their experience because my mind was always moving. It's like, well, what about this? And what about this? And um, yeah, so it yeah. was not necessarily well-received being so questioning, especially with more of a fundamentalist growing up um, perspective, but it definitely it definitely has opened me up to more possibilities now. Mm -hmm. And in some times in my life, I've definitely been more constricted and limited. Um, but I would say right now, I'm definitely more open to accepting all ways of viewing and understanding that my personal experience is not like any other personal experience. So I start to give a lot of people around me much more space to breathe, to think. Mm -hmm. um, and I give that to myself too. Um, mm. and that's another thing I definitely need a lot of rest, um, for my mind, even as a generator. And so that was an interesting kind of learning because I have this really active mind. I may not necessarily be moving my physical body as much, but I still need just as much rest yeah. for my mind. And I loved what you described for your son too, winding down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that. And yeah, the shadow side that I was kind of talking to, or what I probably meant more was the condition is that what we heard is like these curious kids that wanted to ask questions for the sake of asking questions, not necessarily to get to an answer, but just to ask questions. But then, you know, the parents finding it like you're too much, you, you ask too many questions, you know, all of those, those sort of things. And I think that's something that was kind of discussed quite a bit on, on the panel. And I know for me, like I, as I, as you, you guys know, I'm undefined here in Ajna. My son is defined and I shared this story of um, when Coop was about four, we were driving from my mum's place to home. It was about a three and a half hour drive and he literally asked questions the entire time and I answered every single one of them and I was freaking exhausted. But it's really fascinating the more I've got to know about it is it's like a lot of his question answering was more connection then it was actually, um, you know, to discover an answer per se. I mean, he's very questioning now. He, he's, he asks all the big questions, um, but he also uses questions as a form of connection as well, which I think is, is beautiful. Um, and for me personally, when I was a kid being undefined, um, it, it was one of the challenges I had. Like I had a lot of conditioning around not asking questions. And I'm like, what's wrong with me? Why don't I ask questions? Why is it that I'm not interested or do I just not know? And that tied into the conditioning of being stupid because um, I'd been diagnosed with dyslexia. I was like, maybe I'm just stupid and I don't get it. And it's so freeing now as an adult that I'm like, I just had to wait for the things that light me up to spark the questions instead of um, trying to force myself. And I think this is a huge theme for the head, yeah, is that whether you're defined or undefined, when you force it, 
you're not going to receive the magic of the head center energy. Um, do you want to add something to that, Susan? I'm getting lots of nods going. Yes. Um, you definitely can't force or try and control it because that's when <laughs> that's when you end up not following guidance when you are yeah. end up putting yourself in a box. I love to about being too much. I definitely was considering consider that. And now my kids, my kids, I, two of my kids have defined Anjas. Nobody has a defined head, but when they ask questions, I actually turn it back on them. I'm like, well, what do you think? Mm. And so we still have that connection and I don't feel the pressure to answer any of their questions. I so love that's that. been my trick. I <laughs> love that. And I think it's a really powerful um, thing to do, whether it's from a parenting point of view or a human design point of view, it's a really powerful tool. I mean, I'll often ask my kids the same Um you know, because I've got two MGs, I'll ask them a version of a yes, no question to get them thinking about it. Um, but also, you know, I think it's really powerful to understand that this is a muscle that we're building. Um, in many cases, we're all conditioned not to trust um, our mind. I mean, a lot of work, I mean, human design, right? We're actually talking about how we have to, like, I, I, you'll hear me say we have to move from the mind to the body. But a lot of people out there are teaching that you shouldn't trust the mind. But the mind is, is how we connect to source. The mind is our unconscious supercomputer. Like it's so powerful and so important. Um, and it's creating our co-creating our reality with us. Um, it has a big impact on our frequency and our vibration, and, and that affects everything. So I think what's really important to understand is that whether you're defined. Um, knowing that you are potentially going to be someone who wants to question. Um, and and I, one of the things, I, the distinctions I loved is like question for the sake of questioning, not even necessarily find an answer. Um, you know, I think that's really powerful. But also that if you are undefined, it's important to, to notice that your, like my, my head is completely reading the energy out there all the energy of all the inspiration of all the questions of all the curiosity um, of everyone else's thinking. And when I let it read that frequency, read that information, then what matters to me and what I need to move forward just appears. Like it just freaking appears. There is no process to get there. Um, and for me, I know that a lot of my journey, because I sort of became aligned through my coaching first, um, I could see how in coaching I could really trust the mind. I tried so hard to create processes. So obviously we're taught a bunch of um, models and we run the models and it would be really weird for me because I would be running the model and it would be, I would feel like my mind dropped into a black hole, like, shit, I don't know what I have to do next. Fuck, what's the next thing? Oh, my God, I can't remember it. Um, and, you know, at first I would be really down on myself for that until I realized like, oh, well, I'm just going to go for it. And gratefully that where I studied, we did a lot of what we call triads. So we were constantly coaching each other, constantly um, listening to other people coaching, you know, so we were, you know, for this line three, that worked really well. And what I noticed was that if I actually let go of the model, like I know the model, I've learned the model, but if I let go of the model and just trust what drops in, the right question drops in, um, the right pattern drops in, you know, whatever I need actually comes to me. I don't need to go hunting for it um, or, or there's no, no process for me to go and find it per se. Um, so as you guys may have heard me say, like I even have mantras that really relate to my thinking and that is like when something pops out, um, I'll be like, oh, it'll, it'll come back to me. It'll, it'll come back to me in a minute. Um, and, you know, questions have become something that I'm really good at. And as I say, like, there is no process to those questions. I literally read something, learn something, experience something, and then that, that question is in response. And this is how I've built not only, um, you know, recondition my own mind, but this is a large part of the work that I do. You know, this is how, because it's the quest when we ask ourselves the questions and reflect on ourselves, this is when we have massive breakthroughs. So, just because you're undefined in the, in the head doesn't mean that you can't be good at questions. It just means you can come to questions through a process of trust as, as, um, as opposed to a process of thinking or questioning per se. 
you want to add to that, Susan? Does that resonate for you? Yes. And I, there are a couple of things I want to comment on. You, you shared such wisdom there. Um, I love too, that the mind is not something holding you back and the mind is not your ego. The ego is just the layers of identity that are covering up the mind often mm-hmm. in appropriating the mind. So I loved that. Um, and yeah, cause I think in a lot of spiritual stuff today out there, they are dissing the mind and saying, you need to get out of your mind and not use that. And if you have a defined head, that's not true. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I love that you talked about was trust and just that you are trusting that the right idea, the right question at the right time is literally going to drop into your head. I'm trusting that the processing going on in my head, the constant thoughts that I, I can be a bystander to, or I can dive into are going to result in the best possible solution for the resources I have right now. To the point, I will even go to meetings now. And I used to feel like I needed to express my ideas verbally for people to understand them. And when you described how influential defined head beings can be, I now show up and be authentically me. And I probably say way less than I used to. Mm. And all things knowing that other people on the call and it's a virtual call um, will end up picking up on my thoughts because we're still in that energy field together and I won't even have to express them. And and I used to feel like I needed to take ownership of that because that was my worth and my value. And now it's just so open. It's like, Mm -hmm. isn't this amazing that we can all be connected? And I no longer feel the pressure to necessarily express verbally at all. I can just be, be who I am and show up. And how powerful is that? Oh my God, I love that. And, you know, one of the things that's so powerful about this, and I said it just before we got on the um, press record, like it, this is, this is true raising of your consciousness and letting go of ego. So let me just elaborate a little bit more on what um, Susan's talking about. So with a defined head, you are literally putting thoughts into other people's mind, specifically someone like me who has an undefined head. Um, to the point where you can literally, so in our family, if Cooper's thinking about something for dinner, like something he'd like for dinner, it's not uncommon for me to say, would you like lasagna for dinner, let's say, I don't know, Um, because he's thinking about it, okay? So what Susan's um, alluding to is that, that you can literally with a defined head, you can sit in a boardroom or a virtual boardroom or a classroom, and you're influencing people through your thinking, then someone like me who has an undefined head is literally accessing. And like like I just said, like I'm going to sit there, I'm going to be present, I'm going to be taking in all the information, and something's going to jump out at me. And that's something that's going to jump out at me, whether it's a question. Let's For, the, for this uh, example, let's say it's a question. You know, it might be something that Susan's three steps ahead of me and she's like, well, like let's get to this, this point. Um, so because that thinking is going on, I'm inspired to ask questions to move that along in that direction. So with a defined head, you're already influencing the room already. Like you don't have to open your mouth because of your consistent energy there and your consistent natural ability to ask questions that's already influencing the room. And it's giving people like me with my definition, the opportunity to, Um, grasp something or head in a direction or feel inspired to to get curious about something so it's really really important to understand that you don't need to to justify it's your thought it's your idea you moved it forward because your energy is way ahead of your ego you know your energy is way ahead of your ego do you want to add something to that Susan? Just, I love the way that you summed that up and wrote, like you said that so beautifully, much more beautifully than I could say with my undefined throat, but I can finally just relax into who I am. And I feel, even though I have the pressure of the mind center, I feel like no pressure to speak, which is so relaxing to me with a a undefined throat that I don't, I don't have to, I can contribute without saying a word, which to my younger self is like mind blown. It's like, how is that possible? Yeah. Without doing a thing or saying a word, I can contribute. That makes no sense. Yeah. But I love the way that you describe that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. 
And I think that this is the beauty of these podcasts and of the panels that we're doing is that we can dive deep into how this energy actually expresses. Um, We can learn the knowledge in a very two-dimensional way, but when we integrate this way and we talk about our feeling, our experience, even the stories that we experienced as kids and, and unpack them, we can see how our energy is so similar and those of us that aren't similar, how our energy is actually designed to work so perfectly hand in hand with each other. Um, you know, you think about someone like Albert Einstein who had an undefined head in Ajna. It would have been the people that he was around that really helped him to bring all the pieces together, these undefined, uh, these defined thinkers and, and questions and that, that helped him to come up with the, you know, conclusions he came up with. So we're all designed to work perfectly together. Um, now, I've got one last question for you, and I didn't ask this on the panel um, for the head centre. I think it started in the throat centre uh, panel. So how would you, what is it, um, how is your head centre, your defined head centre, a superpower? My head center is a superpower because it allows me to be influential without actually efforting. (laughs) So I would say being able to just have that constant thought stream. I was thinking actually back to, you know, previous partners and current partner and my current partner does not have a defined head and my previous partner did. And it was like, oh, I could always ask, what are you thinking? And there would always be an answer because (laughs) there's never not thinking. And so being open, like my superpower of having that and being allowing of other people to not have thoughts in their head, like it wasn't comprehensible to me that you people just don't have this stream of consciousness, Mm. like flowing through them, the stream of thought constant. Um, And I will have to say as younger, it was probably to my detriment because some of those thoughts weren't necessarily beneficial for me. But now that I've started opening up and started accepting who I am and released and healed a lot of that conditioning through even the practices you've taught, which are so amazing, that has really opened me up to seeing that, no, this is a superpower. This is really who I am without having to change one bit. And Mm. I, I think being who you are is the greatest superpower for anyone, right? I totally agree. I totally agree. And I think that's so beautifully said, you know, one of the the things I think that is incredibly powerful is that when we understand what we're not, then we have compassion, you know, so understanding the defined versus the undefined and being the opposite of yourself and getting that energy, that in itself is powerful because it's acceptance, it's compassion. um, And that in itself is super powerful. You know, I also love what you said, like you, as much as um, there can be so much thinking in an undefined head, like, you know, exhibit A over here, um, there isn't that structure, that isn't that that consistent process, that there isn't that, you know, um, I just want to say like tidiness, like that, that, that process. And we need to have the process and we need to not have the process. We need to have both so that we can look at the past, see what worked, what didn't work, um, you know, to create a better future so that we can support and serve um, the tribe and the collective so we can change on an individual level. Like we need it. Um, We need both. And I think this is what's super powerful about it is when we understand not so much what we're, we're, not and what we don't want, but what we are and who we what we do want. And that's the power of it. You know, I think the superpower of my undefined head is always about being really open-minded, being super curious, um, being able to trust that um, I don't need to question. I don't need to have answers. I don't need to have the right question. I don't need to have anything that if I actually trust my mental process um, and, you know, for me, a large part of trusting my mental process comes from taking care of that. So that's through meditation, through physical exercise, through eating well, um, you know, not drinking. I mean, I drink a little bit, but not drinking alcohol much. Like I do all of these things, not only for my physical body, but for my mental body, because I already have, it's already messy up there on the best day. It's still going to be messy until the clarity drops in and the clarity will be there for a moment. And then it it moves on because whatever I'm bringing clarity to 
is moving on. So the superpower for me is the ability to be so open-minded, to be able to, to get inspiration from all sorts of places and be open and compassionate about where it comes from so that I can use what I learned to help myself or help others and move things forward. So yeah, I think I love I love my undefined head, even though it feels me- messy and a little bit pressured sometimes. I do love it because when when it's open and a clean channel, it just brings in such important wisdom and guidance from source and I'm and and others. And I'm really grateful for that. No, oh, I love that too. Beautiful. Well, I love that there's difference. Yeah. I love that ahead. there's difference. And there's also, yeah, it's like through your head, you're always connecting to source, whether you're defined or undefined. So it doesn't exactly. matter. Like there's beauty in both. So I love exactly. that. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, there is also this piece. Um, we learned this thing in the, with the undefined G center, but I feel like there's a bit of resonance with it in the head center is, you know, with the defined head center, you do have this feeling of, of consistent, connection to to source like there is always energy coming in whereas an undefined head you might feel like that's not always there I know I do Um, a part of my conditioning that I've been healing over the years and and every now and then it pops up and I'm like oh there's that shadow piece again but it comes from my g center um, more so than the head but you know they they support each other unresourcefully is that inconsistent support and inconsistent connection Um, and these are two areas that do uh, aligned to, you know, source to something greater than us. Um, and, you know, that's also something to be super aware of is that it's not true. There is no inconsistency in my connection to source. Um, however, my energy will feel like that sometimes. It will just feel like that sometimes. So, again, I think whenever we find an undefined centre, we just have to be super aware that this is where our trust muscle has to be built um, in something bigger than us. And often where we're defined, our trust muscle needs to be built within us. Um, and obviously the two need to be everywhere, but I think they're the sort of the distinctions for defined and undefined. Oh, I love that? that. Awesome. Oh, yeah. No, I love that. That was beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm excited because I've had you here on this podcast and it's been really fun talking about it. Thank you for your mental support and sending me in the right direction for this podcast. I feel I feel really grateful. Uh, so thanks so much for joining, Susan. Thank you, Emma. This was so fun. So amazing. Awesome. Thanks, everyone, for being here. As I said, we're kicking off. This is our first centre. So stay tuned for the rest of the series as we go through each of the other energy centres in your human design chart. Thanks for joining. Bye for now. Thanks everyone for being here all the way to the end of the podcast. I hope you got lots of value out of it. I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Could I please ask that you share this podcast with friends if you found it valuable? And also, bonus points, could you leave a review for me as well on Apple? It would be greatly appreciated. If at any point you would like to be on the podcast or you've got questions that you'd like me to discuss on the podcast, by all means, get on my socials and DM me. Everything you need is there in the show notes. Have an awesome day. Bye for now.